much for joining us. So for anyone that's joining us so now, you are we're coming up on Georgia. five years. And so how it'll be, long have well, you it'll be five studio? years in August. Yeah, so it's been a it's been a wild ride, but <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and you're at that very interesting point totally. because we, you were probably we had just an awesome get your first room, year, um, and then pandemic probably was like, Hello. way more than I would have expected. <laughs> like I. I remember my accountant saying, don't expect to be busy or make any money the first year. So when we did, that was pretty exciting. And then just as we got our groove, because those are also the busy months, like January, February <laughs> slammed. And then it was like the crash, the boom. So um, yeah. yeah, so COVID. So nobody's ever was ever prepared for that. And um, we, you know, survived. So that's, that's the yeah. most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. What was it like in those moments when you, you know, you realized, oh, oh my God, so we have to close the studio. I looked back at how, the time and I think I was a little bit driven moments? by, you know, the adrenaline of it and the challenge of it, because that's kind of how I roll. So that's a good thing. Um, I have an amazing staff who was willing to do whatever I, the, all the crazy stuff that I thought about doing. Um, I just kept coming up with newer and newer ideas of how can we yeah. keep my, my goal was keep our customers. You know, I wasn't focused on making money. I was focused on keeping our clientele and giving them what they needed because people so badly still wanted to connect and do yoga and there was nowhere for them to do that. And yes, you can do that online, but it's not really the same. So my situation, I was really lucky because I have a huge parking lot out in front of the studio, which is to the side of kind of where the other businesses were. So it didn't interfere with anybody else's business. And my lease uh, company was kind enough to let us yeah. practice out there. So I'm fairly yeah. sure we were the first studio in the area to do outdoor classes. So we started doing outdoor classes and then we live streamed from inside um, for free because we just wanted to keep people on. We did offer yeah. a monthly virtual yeah. membership, which, you know, yeah. I didn't go into this wanting to be a virtual yoga teacher, you know, um, but we had to figure it out and figure out how to do that and keep people on. So mm -hmm. we actually just did Facebook Live for a lot of our virtual streaming. And, you know, it ended up being fun because we still had mm -hmm. the connection. So we'd click on and see, oh, look who's on and stuff like that. But between the outdoor classes, which were huge, I mean, yeah. there were days where we had 50, 60 people out there in the parking lot. It was, it was amazing and it was fun. And there were a few of that's us amazing. that, you know, every yoga teacher is different yeah. and that's okay. That's one of the things I think that makes us successful. But um, there were a few of us that really enjoyed it. So we would go out there and start our class with like yeah. the Macarena or something crazy, like just, just to make it fun. And we ended up getting a lot of attention <laughs> because of that too. People were like, yeah. who are these people out on the middle of the road doing yoga? Mm -hmm. So it kind of brought, it even brought in some new clients, <laughs> believe it or not, at that time who were like, oh, they have group fitness classes. Yeah. So we did that. We sold a lot of merchandise. Like right when it all yeah. happened, I went out and bought tons of yoga mats and all this stuff and we delivered mm -hmm. them to people so that they had a means to get anything right. they needed. Um, right. And then we did neighborhood classes. So we were calling it like yoga in the hood yeah. or yoga in your hood. So we were doing that mm -hmm. and then we were doing the virtual. I mean, it was just anything. Yeah. We may as well have been doing yoga yeah. on the interstate because that's pretty much, that's pretty much what we did. And it kept, kept right. <laughs> And, and I love that, that people, that people did that. I mean, we, we adapted Absolutely. and, you know, connecting right. at that time. And I mean, I had clients coming up to me ever and saying and like, what are you going to, you know? what are you going to do next? And they really, they meant it. They were like going to cry if we didn't have a way right. to do yoga. And I think in addition to, right. you know, feeling right. isolated, not having your usual routine, people were struggling mentally mm -hmm. during that time. We all know all this. This isn't anything new that I'm telling you, but yeah. It really was important to me to continue to offer something for yeah. people because they needed it, you know? Um, so I think that's sort of what kept us all going. And luckily, yeah. my, I didn't have to let go any of my staff or, or pay cut them or anything like that. And that was important to me, too, because although most wow. of them, it's, you know, not their main career, it's yeah. a second career. Yeah. Um, we love our job. I mean, that's why we do this, right. because we love what we do. So, um, and I have right. an incredible community yeah. that was really supportive. They would not have let me close. 
I, they would close. I mean, they would not have let me close. So, um, so yeah, I think all that right. together kind of kept things rolling. Yeah. We're not. We're Are not. You still we went back to not doing that. I just, like I said, classes you still? know, that wasn't really yeah. who I wanted to be at that time. Not that anything is wrong with that. Um, but at that time, I just felt yeah. like we wanted to be, you know, we talk about community right. a lot as, as yoga people. And I think that can kind of become a word that we throw around a right. little bit. And we're not totally sure of the meaning. We have a community. We have a great community. You walk in and everybody knows each mm. other. They say hello to each other. Mm. And I personally just yeah. felt um, disconnected with my, yeah. my people at that time. And that's not to say I wouldn't virtually teach because I think there's huge benefits to that too. Yeah. But for us at that time, it just wasn't right. So we, um, so right. we just kind of slowly started working our way back. And, you know, with all of the, uh, you know, laws and rules of what you could and couldn't do, Georgia was pretty laid back during that time. So I look at other people yeah. who say, you know, we didn't make it. And I'm like, you can't mm -hmm. compare. You're in California. You could barely leave your house, right? We, we were able to continue to do classes. I think I yeah. was closed for yeah, sure. um, about six weeks. And that's when we did most of the virtual and all that. And then we were able to still have classes inside just with yeah. less people. So like right now we have 36 in a class. We we had yeah. like eight when we first started to keep them 10 feet apart. Yeah. And that was hard because as you know, I'm losing money paying a teacher and having right. people in the room, but I had to keep it going. So um, a lot of times yeah. we had two classes going on, one outside and one yeah. inside. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but now we just mm -hmm. have indoor That's work hard. to 36 yeah. and I probably could increase it, but people still don't want to be super close, even though we've gotten, yeah, it's, I think people still have a little bit of like, I don't know, intimacy okay. issues with yeah. strangers and things like that. It, there are things that have changed that I think are permanent. And that's one yeah. of them. So I don't want, I don't want people to feel uncomfortable or go, okay, this is a little too tight. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and I, that's interesting that you say that because I do feel like yeah. that's sort of a collective. For sure. I want to almost say like a scar on us that we're all still trying to kind of work through. Have you noticed in terms of what kind of classes people are gravitating would, towards more? I, is it any different I would say from now the pandemic? It feels is there like a desire for normal, a different right? kind um, of class? But right after, you know, I think people wanted the yeah. doors open or they wanted, you know, they weren't as gung-ho on like, oh, it has to be hot. Because I think they cared more mm -hmm. about, you know, having a little space and feeling safe. Mm -hmm. um, but now I feel like, they're over it for the most part, except for yeah. wanting to be too close. I mean, in any yoga studio, we all know as mm -hmm. an owner, we don't have big, huge spaces typically because it costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So we're always tight and packed in those rooms. Um, right. But luckily, I, I think we're right at the, I right. mean, I'm about to outgrow my studio. Like we are, we're busting at the seams for sure, but they're, Oh, thank you. No, it's a great thing, but there's something nice Congratulations. about that too. I think that <laughs> also creates that community. Um, I was teaching on Saturday and I was looking around and I'm like, I don't know at least 10 people in my class, which is a little frightening and exciting at the same time because I usually know everybody and I'm proud of that. And then also I'm like, oh, we're, we're still growing. So, um, so right. we'll see. I mean, I, my lease is up in, in August and right. my brain's all over the place about what the next move will be. So we'll see. Yeah. 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 Do you think it's just new people just learning about the space or new yeah. people coming to yoga? Because sure. I know with the For pandemic, sure. a lot of people um, might have tried it. Probably a little of both. They I could, think people you know? coming back into the real world, I think, you know, and not mm -hmm. because they were afraid of COVID, but because they got in these routines and got in a rut. I mean, I personally, I'm the right. owner of a yoga studio and I could barely get yeah. myself to class most of the time because I was so busy focusing on not only my business, but um, yeah. I just kind of got in the routine of not going. So I just recently am getting back into it too. And I think it's just motivating yourself yeah. again, changing your focus again. Uh, and I think people are starting to feel, yeah. it's taken a long time, I think, for right. people to feel normal. So, um, you know, with new clients, we always do a new client special of some yeah. sort. So there's those people that come in just because it's a good deal and they live local and they're mm -hmm. like, hey, I'm going to pay you know, $40 for a month of free yoga, and then I'm going to move on. Right. 
Um, but we have a really high retention rate. So we tend to yeah. keep most of our, yeah. our new people. So hopefully this means new people, new clients. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you had mentioned sort of the peak season yeah. for you. Um, when is the peak season for people we to start? start? Is it after get the busy year? For, is for it holiday? Because we start you do hot yoga around primarily. November. And then it builds November, December. January is huge. Mm. February starts to taper a tiny bit. And then, um, you know, the summer right. is consistent, but it's not as big as the rest right. of the year. For whatever reason, March is always my slowest month. I have no mm. idea. I'd love to know if any other yoga teachers, it's the same thing. So during huh. March, like we just did a uh, St. Patty's Day right. promo. We did free classes all weekend. We were slammed. So it was great. And I do stuff right. like that just to remind right. people, like, don't, right. don't get out of your groove. Come in. And, you know, you give away something free, people are coming. So, yeah. And also yes. just to show kind of my appreciation right. for my community. You know, throw them a free class here and there or do yeah. something nice for them. Yeah. And I think it shows, like, we're trying to reciprocate. Yeah. Yeah, and we I do, we do. We have one Monday night class that and the people that teach that so are the ones that came out of our most yeah. recent teacher training. So we have, um, and I have the, be I have to tell you, I have the best trainers mm. and I get these kit these guys coming out of teacher training that are incredible and mm. I can't hire them yeah. all, you know? So I like to have a way for them to continue yeah. teaching because it's so important that they stay connected. So we do that Monday night class yeah. um, throughout the year. Because as soon as that group finishes, that usually the next one's graduating. So yeah. um, it gives them a chance to practice and get themselves out right. there as a teacher, even if they aren't on the permanent schedule. Yeah. Yeah. I was just chatting with another studio earlier, and we were sort of trying to figure out when people do a teacher yeah. training, what percentage actually go on to teach? Have you noticed? Because you know, I yeah. personally did a teacher yes. training and I, I don't teach, but I, I feel like there's so many and benefits. I think to a lot of people go into it, you know, just when, have on when a personal level. all yoga studios, including us, sell a yoga teacher training, we say, you don't have to be a teacher. This could be because it's your passion to practice. You want to learn more. Um, as time goes okay. on, I'm starting to believe that less and less because I think, and, and you know, the yoga teachers out there are going to kill me for saying this, but um. I think <laughs> as you go through, you really know, like, this is what I want to do. And I think a lot of people going into it say that because they're a little scared. They're a little yeah. scared to admit, I want to teach because what if I fail? Um, so it's a larger mm. percentage coming out that end up wanting to teach mm. than, than think they will. Um, the amount that end up, gosh, I would right. say half, half right. of them. And, you know, part of it is they keep the ball rolling when they oh, come okay. out. Yeah. You know, they're teaching or they're aggressive enough to ask because I'm like, I can't read right. your minds. You yeah. got to come tell me do you want to continue teaching? But I do whatever I can to support those people. Right. I have them sub if it's available, or I like created a couple extra classes this weekend during our free yeah. weekend um, for two of the recent graduates and they killed it. So if I know they really want to teach, I'm going to do whatever I can to help right. them get out there. Right. I mean, that's part of our, that should be part of our, our responsibility. Yeah. They paid a lot of money to go through training and you can't just take their money and then forget about them. You got to help them get to the next step. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you That's remember funny. if any of my staff is on here, they're probably laughing right first now. Teacher training. Um, I was probably one of the worst students that is ever known to man. Um, but I knew going through <laughs> teacher training, I'm like, I need to be a studio owner. You know, I knew right. that was. Right. Yeah, I just was a little bit, I don't know, it, it, I had a difficult oh, wow. time yeah. in that role. Um, when I came out, I should have been ready because mm -hmm. my trainers were great. Mm -hmm. I wasn't right. quite ready because it was my own fault. Um, but I graduated yeah. teacher training yeah. in March. I signed my lease mm -hmm. a month later. I opened the studio in August. So it was like crazy. But I knew at that time I had people that would, that would come work for me. So I just hired a right. killer staff. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to mm. figure it out. I'll mm. start teaching. And that's how you become yeah. a better teacher is teaching. And I had people, right. I had a couple teachers that every week were in right. my front row yeah. watching me. And after class, I would say, okay, give me one thing, just one to work on. Work on that for a week and then go to the next thing. So, yeah. Right. So I always said, though, yeah. I can just be a great one. boss and a great <laughs> studio owner without being a great teacher. 
And I still believe that that's true, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, there is right. a different kind of connection with your clients right. that you should have as a teacher too. Um, and I mm -hmm. learned, I mean, I, I was, I, you, I'm still learning, you know, yeah. we're all still learning every day from the people around us. So, um, I don't know if I right. answered that question, yeah. but. <laughs> well, do you, do you think that it was because you were in the training, you maybe had that think, clarity that you could make yes, that decision? Yes, I think that, I, so, that is kind of how I am as a person. As a person. I think personally, I know that, you know, yeah. I was going through some big changes in my yeah. life. So I wasn't a hundred percent sure what I wanted to do with mm -hmm. that, but I knew that I needed to establish my career. And you know, when you get a second chance to go do your career mm -hmm. all over again, you want to do what you love. You don't mm -hmm. want to do something just for money and you can do that. Right. So, mm -hmm. and I did love, I was in the uh, apparel business for many years, but yeah. um, I did yoga all the time and I loved it. And I remember mm -hmm. years ago thinking, you know, I would love to teach yoga, but I didn't have time. I had two little kids. I was a single mom. I didn't have time to go through teacher training. So I made the time and I made it happen. Yeah. And I'm so glad I did because I didn't want to be in the grind of, you know, daily traveling and doing things and being away from my family because I knew I only had so many years left to spend with my kids. Yeah. So this gave me, although don't get me wrong, I work hard and I work a lot. Yeah. But it gave me the flexibility of what kind of hours I wanted to yeah. work, what time I wanted to teach, and that kind of thing. So I think that yoga is a great career for that right. reason, because you can go teach your class and go home, you know? Um, so right. that was sort of why, you know, right. why I went down that road. Right. What advice if someone came to you and said, I want to own my own studio. So it's really what funny you say that because I've had that happen first recently. Piece of advice and would and this one of the people that said it to me doesn't even do yoga. And I looked at them like, yeah. tell me why. Why would you want to do that? And they said, mm. it just is, oh. it feels so yeah. fun. It feels like the community and this and that. And I was like, okay, well, that's a good answer. Um, but you mm. need to know you're still a small business owner. And there's nothing right. easy about that. Okay. Yoga, it, I'm never going to be a millionaire yeah. owning one yoga studio. Right. So I think you have to be prepared for the work, the hard work. Um, it's not just teaching, you know, you're managing a staff and as you grow, that yeah. gets harder and harder. Luckily, like I said, I mean, I have 20 teachers now who are incredible and I'm so mm -hmm. lucky. They are the ones that keep the ball rolling, you know, not just wow. me, but I've got to, yeah. I've got to give, you know, kind of the direction from, yeah. from the top. So I think um, the first thing I would say is be prepared right. to work a lot. You know, you have to, you have to be prepared to work a lot. You have to be prepared to yeah. grow your business yeah. to a point where you're feeling like you're making money. And it's a hard, it's a hard thing to do. Um, patience with that probably. Yeah. And then just that you have to mm. have passion mm. for what you do for mm. your, um, for your people, for your community. Uh, they want to see you. They want to know you. They want, you know, you have to be yeah. the face of, of the business. I think it's, really, really yeah. important. So, I mean, I guess that would be where I would start. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's important to, to remember it, it is a business, you know, and, and maybe that person that doesn't practice, maybe they're, I yes. don't know if they're in a better or worse position because right. they do have that. They can come and I agree with that, but I think at the same time you have, a good partner if you're point. not teaching but, it, you don't really yeah. know if there's yeah. things you know, yeah. you, you see things a little bit differently, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So what's coming up in the future that you're excited about? I know you said potential expansion. Yes, so Maybe we have not sure. Your lease a couple is off. Are there any have a retreat that are um, coming, coming up, up in November. This is our second one. We did one at the tail, or what we thought was the tail end of COVID. Ended up, ended up not being. But... Um, we did one that was still pretty successful, but this one is in November and it's in the Dominican Republic and anybody can come. I mean, the majority of people we pull are from the studio. 
But um, I think we only have three spots yeah. left. We have like 20 people coming to that. And right. I know it's amazing. Like people are ready to go. So it's wow, awesome. Wow. And amazing. I don't have yeah. the time to plan the retreat <laughs> the right way. So I use a, a company called Bliss Yoga Retreats. They're amazing. Right. And they helped me plan the last one. I was like, you know what? Mm. I'm going to help them ha have me plan mm. this one again. So we're probably going to have the whole resort to ourselves, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And um, it's a very like all natural, very yogi kind of place. Wow. So it should be pretty wow. cool. So that's November 2nd. Um, yeah. I'm a Lululemon yeah. ambassador. So that started in uh, July, which is about a year mm -hmm. and a half. And that has been such an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. It has not only opened up right. doors for me, you know, in terms of like who mm -hmm. I know in the community or in the world, but um, yeah. we do events together pretty, pretty consistently. So there's all kinds of events that are always coming up with them that I get to be a part of, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. They are one of the most incredible companies I've ever, and I don't say that because I have to, I say it because I mean it, but um, they're amazing. I mean, yeah. they're generous, they're supportive, right. all the things you right. imagine <laughs> about being a partner yeah. with someone, they're, they're there. So um, this summer, the, the, right. they're, at, they're at a place called The Avenue in East Cobb. I'm not even sure. Are you in New York? New York. Okay. I thought so. So um, mm -hmm. they are redoing that whole area for anybody that's on this in this area. But um, we have a place called the, um, mm -hmm. the Avalon, which yeah. also has a Lululemon. And every year they did outdoor classes. So we're going to be doing that now mm -hmm. at the Avenue this summer. So I'll be teaching mm -hmm. outdoor along with a couple of my other instructors on a weekly yeah. basis, which will be great for the studio and fun because that's that community, you know, feel again. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's coming up um, in the summer. We have another yeah. yoga teacher training going on right now. So the next one will probably be in the fall. Um, we'll probably do a kid's mm -hmm. summer camp this year. We have a big kid's community. Yes, mm -hmm. which is really fun. And um, I think that's like oh, the nice. main stuff I have yeah. right now. Yeah. I love that. I, I yes. was talking with a kids yoga teacher a couple of weeks ago. I, I love that kids have yoga these days. I know. I, I know. I it's great. Yoga. I mean, they, like they love it. The parents so are much looking different. for it because for whatever reason, I mean, I don't remember yeah. as a kid having the kind of challenges that some kids have today, the anxiety and the stress and all that. Like, I don't remember yeah. that being a thing, but today it's yeah. a thing. And these kids need an escape and something yeah. other than you know, hitting a ball yeah. all the time or whatever. Not that that's not a big thing too, but um, it's more of a, you know, the meditative practice of it. And they really do well. It's amazing. I teach, uh, right. I teach the, uh, one of the local football teams yoga every week during their, their football season, yeah. which is Walton High School. And those yeah. kids, they're amazing. Like they yeah. lay down and they get into it and get into the moment. You'd think they'd be giggling or, you know, and they really enjoy it. Like, I really think it, it is, something right. important for them so i would i would love to encourage people to get their teens and their kids yeah. out to yoga because it really is helpful for them yeah. thank you yeah. thank you for having me i'm super thank you excited so much Karen, about the magazine and today. i wish you guys it was the best such a love. pleasure and thank you yeah thank you so much and it's only because of studio partners of course. like you that no, we it's can my actually pleasure. I'm, a magazine I'm thrilled so to thank you for supporting us found and me. our work thank you so much you'll be able to pick up free copies at your studio in June when the issue is out. And I'm going to okay, share great. this on YouTube as well. So the link will live online. And you, you can share too. It as Thank well. you again. And okay, bye -bye. have a great day and happy spring.